All right, continuing with our lesson on full employment, what we're now going to talk about in this segment are the three types of unemployment or the three categories of unemployment. Now, before I actually just give them to you, I want to ask two important questions. Uh, these are questions that we want to ask when we're dealing with employment in an economy. The first question is, are there jobs available in the economy? Another way of asking that, the very same question is basically is, are firms, are firms actively seeking workers? Actively seeking workers. Okay, what I mean by this is if you don't have a job, but you're trying to find a job, you're, you're looking, you're putting in applications, or you're sending out resumes, there's a difference between trying to find a job and you just can't find the right job or you can't find the right company to hire you or the, you know, you're trying to find a job where your skills are useful. But companies are hiring. There's lots of jobs available. You know, you go onto the website and, there's, and, and in your area there are thousands of jobs available. Businesses are trying to get employees, trying, trying, trying to hire, trying to fill those positions so that they can uh, create output so that they can produce output and sell that output and make money and, uh, and for people to have utility, okay? That situation is very different than the situation where you're sending out resumes and filling out applications and every time you send something out, everybody says, well, we're not hiring, we're not hiring, we're not hiring, we're not looking for workers, sorry, we actually just laid off like 500 people. No, I'm sorry, we're not taking applications right now. Those are two very different situations. The second question that we're going to ask is this, is do the available workers, so the unemployed workers that are trying to find jobs, do the available workers, and that's what an, uh, an unemployed person is, an unemployed person is an available worker, okay? Do the available workers have the necessary abilities, have the necessary abilities, you know, like the skills necessary to do the job. Like if somebody's hiring carpenters, if, if you're a carpenter, then you have the ability to use a drill, to use a saw, you know how to, how to hammer uh, nails through wood, you know how to build stuff. You could build a set of stairs if you needed to, you know, you could frame a house probably, okay? Uh, do the available workers have the necessary abilities for the available jobs? For the available jobs. All right, so here's what we're asking. Are there jobs available in the economy? Yes, there's tons of jobs available. Businesses are hiring like crazy. All these businesses are trying to find employees. They want to hire people. But, do the workers who are available, so we have this, we have, work, we have unemployed people, we have unemployed people, and we have jobs, all right? So uh, jobs available and workers available. But do they match, okay? Do they fit with each other? Are the abilities of the people over here, do they match the necessary skills of the jobs that are available. Because if these workers don't have the right skills, then they can't be hired by these jobs. And if they want to be hired by these jobs, then what they need to do is they need to go get the skills. They might need to go to college, or they might need to go to a training uh, seminar or a training conference, or they might need to go get a certificate in whatever uh, skills or abilities are needed for these jobs. So, th these are two important questions. Are there jobs available and do the workers, the unemployed workers, do they have the right skills to, to apply for those jobs and to get those jobs? That's very important. 
Now, in addition to asking these two questions, we have one more consideration before we talk about the three types of unemployment. And that consideration is this. It takes time. It takes time for workers and firms, for workers and firms to find each other, to find each other and begin employment and begin employment. So let's say, let's say that there are unemployed workers and there are jobs available and uh, the, and the workers have the correct skills or the correct abilities for those jobs. So even though it's a good match between the unemployed workers and the jobs themselves, there's time. It takes time for uh, the workers to send out their resumes and for the businesses to take all the resumes and compile them. They might be collecting resumes for a week or two weeks before they even start calling people and setting up interviews. And once they set up interviews, usually there's at least a couple rounds of interviews until they narrow down the stack to the, the people that they want to hire. And once they hire the people, they have to give the, the people, hey, you know, you're going to start in about a week. Okay, so there's time. Even if that time is only three days or that time could be a month or a month and a half, it takes time for those workers to find those jobs and for those firms to screen screen screening is the idea of making sure that the person is a good fit you know you might have for example you might have to give them a drug test you're not you're not going to hire people maybe it's an insurance thing and so you have to send the person down somewhere to go get a drug test and it takes a couple days for the results to come back okay uh, maybe fingerprinting right Maybe they have to go get fingerprinted and make sure that, and then a background check to make sure the person is okay. All of this stuff takes time before actual employment can begin. All right, so now that we have those questions and the considerations, we can now identify the three types of unemployment. And these three types of unemployment are related to the idea of whether workers have the right skills, whether there are jobs available, and what I'm going to do in each of these three types is I'm going to identify what is the problem. Why are people not having jobs? Okay, and the three types of unemployment are frictional, that's fric like friction in physics. There's frictional unemployment. There is structural unemployment, and then there's what is called cyclical, like, like cycle. There is cyclical unemployment, okay? And let me explain. Let's go through each one of these one at a time. In frictional unemployment, the people who are unemployed, they do have the right skills. So they're unemployed, and they do have the right skills for the jobs that are available, okay? And are there jobs available? Yes, there are jobs out there in frictional unemployment, okay? So there are lots of jobs available, and the people who are unemployed, they do have the right skills for the job. So why aren't they employed? If the unemployed people have all the right skills and all the right abilities and the jobs are available, why aren't they employed? Well, the reason they're not employed is because it takes time. It takes time for the unemployed to match up with the jobs that are available and go through the, the hiring process. So we're going to put in here, there's the hiring process.
right? This includes recruiting, it includes screening, it includes, you know, deciding when the person's going to work, when they're going to start. And that's frictional unemployment. Frictional unemployment, by the way, also can happen with employed workers. Let's somebody, say somebody has a job, right? And let's say um, the person wants to move from one job to another job. Let's say that they're working for Burger King and they're gonna, they want to go work for, they're going to go work for McDonald's, okay? Well, when they eventually quit their job for Burger King, it still could take two more weeks until they get hired on at McDonald's. And during that two-week period, they are unemployed. They are frictionally unemployed. Uh, I started a business several years ago, and I didn't start getting paid by, the business, by my own business until February, uh, but I quit my previous job the year before in August. And so from August to September, October, November, December, January, and February, for six months, I was not employed while I got the business started up. So for six months, I was frictionally unemployed. I had the right skills and abilities, and there was a job available. I was making it available, starting my own business, but it just took time for me to move from quitting one job to starting up my business. That's frictional unemployment. Now, in structural unemployment, there are jobs available. There are lots of jobs available, yes. However, under structural unemployment, the employees, the unemployed workers, they do not have the right skills for the jobs that are available, okay? And so these companies, it's not that they can't hire. In my opinion, it's that they should not hire these people. If these companies hire these employees, it's not going to be very efficient. You know, you can't have a carpenter working the job of a doctor, okay, because the carpenter is accustomed to shaping and joining wood, and the doctor is accustomed to dealing with the health of human beings. Those are very different skill sets. They might be related a little, but they're very different skill sets. So in order for the carpenter to become a doctor, that carpenter is going to need to go to medical school. And it's, that's going to take time up until they get the right skills to match the job that is available. Okay, And that is structural unemployment. So the problem in structural unemployment is that it takes time for workers to acquire those abilities. It takes time for the unemployed to gain slash acquire the necessary abilities for the jobs that are available. That is the problem in structural unemployment, okay? We've got the workers, we've got the workers, we've got the jobs, but those workers do not have the right skills, so they're going to have to somehow or another go get those skills. Once they have the skills, they can then be hired into those jobs, okay? Last one, let's talk about cyclical unemployment, okay? Cyclical unemployment. Unemployment. The problem with cyclical unemployment is it doesn't matter whether the, whether the employees have the right skills. None of the skills are the right skills. The problem is that there are no jobs available. Cyclical unemployment happens when at, at times of decreased economic activity in a society. You know, we call it a recession, and we'll talk more about recessions in, in, in a few more lessons, okay? But the idea in cyclical unemployment will say that some of the employees, yes, have the right skills. Some of the employees, no, don't. It doesn't really matter whether they have the right skills, because whether they have the right skills or don't have the right skills, there just aren't any jobs available. Businesses maybe are laying off employees. Why? It's usually because of depressed economic activity, okay? So the problem in cyclical unemployment is that there is little demand for workers. There is little 
demand in, in the labor market. There is little demand for workers from firms. They're not, they're not hiring, okay? And it's usually, usually due to an economic contraction, meaning decreased, decreased production. Meaning there's, there's not as much buying and selling going on. People aren't out at the stores buying as much stuff as they used to, as they used to be buying. Because demand is lower, the quantity demanded is lower. And because the quantity demanded is lower, the companies are going to produce less. They're going to have decreased production. And they don't need as many workers, so they lay off workers. And then they want, they're not looking to hire any more workers, so they have little demand for workers. And we call that cyclical unemployment due to probably a recession, okay? Under cyclical unemployment, one of our problems here is that we have, uh, it, under this, under cyclical unemployment, um, capacity utilization, we just learned about that, capacity utilization decreases. So our, let's say our capacity utilization might go from like 97% down to like 81% if it's especially bad, okay? We're going to, under cyclical unemployment, capacity utilization is going to go down. Why? Because we're not using the workers that we have. We're not using all of our resources. We are not using all of our labor resources. They are unemployed, but they're unemployed because of, uh, because of an economic contraction. And this is a very important concept. You have to remember that, okay? Generally speaking, generally speaking, don't, don't take this too seriously and don't get in an argument over this. But generally speaking, frictional unemployment is good. Structural unemployment is also good. And cyclical unemployment is bad. Now, I'm not going to, uh, technically speaking, most unemployment is bad anyways. But what I mean is this, is there are good things that happen in an economy because of frictional unemployment. Because of frictional unemployment, people can move from a job they hate to a job they love. And they may be more productive at the job they love. And therefore, the time it takes for them to move from the job they hate to the job they love, that's good for the economy. We're going to have a better economy because those people move from a job they hate to a job they love. Structural unemployment is good because people who don't have skills gain more skills. And now our workers are more skilled in our economy and they can be more productive. So that is good. But there really isn't anything good about cyclical unemployment. The whole reason the people aren't working is just because nobody wants to produce and nobody wants to buy. And that's a problem. We need to do something about cyclical unemployment, or at least that's the way the leaders of society see it. Okay? So these are the three types of unemployment.